Today we'll see how to set up and manually focus a 5 megapixel OV5647 camera on the bullseye version of the Raspberry Pi OS. Now the camera that I'm using today I purchased back in 2021 and back then I could connect my camera to the Raspberry Pi using the legacy camera stack with commands like raspy still and raspy vid. Apparently they have transitioned to lib camera stack so today we'll be connecting our camera to Raspberry Pi using commands like lib camera still and lib camera vid for example. It wasn't immediately clear at first but after this video it'll be much easier to connect your camera to your Raspberry Pi. Here is the camera module that I'll be using. I just switched out the ribbon on it. I put the really long ribbon on and if you switched your ribbon this is the proper orientation for putting it into the camera module. The blue side is going to be on the side of the lens so keep that in mind. And this is how you attach the ribbon to the Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 4. It's not a 5. I don't have a 5 yet. But you'll see that the blue side of the ribbon goes toward the front where you plug in your USB devices. And here you can see just how long this ribbon is. It's, it's pretty long. I do like the flexibility of having such a long ribbon. Here's the camera with the lens cap off. And you can see that ring that goes around the lens there. That is for the manual focus. Now this camera is a little older, but it still takes great pictures in a properly lit environment. When you start getting in a darker environment, the pictures aren't that great, but it is 5 megapixel. And I really do like that wide angle, 160 degree view that you get in your images and video. We determined that Raspi Still and Raspi Vid no longer work for us, so we're going to go in and test the lib camera. If you're running Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, you should have lib camera apps by default, but if you don't have it installed, just type in the command sudo apt update to update the package list from your configured repositories so that when you use the command sudo apt install lib camera apps, it installs the most current version available. Now we're going to use the lib camera still command just to see if it recognizes our camera or if we have to go into the boot configuration file for Raspberry Pi and change some settings. Since the Raspberry Pi cannot connect to the camera, let's go to the config file and change some settings. So now we need to type in the command sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config.txt. While we're in this file, we want to look for two entries. One is the dt overlay equals ov5647, and the other entry is camera auto detect equals zero. Both of these entries in the boot config file will tell the Raspberry Pi how to handle the camera module. And that's important, especially for the older cameras like the OV5647. The DT overlay line essentially tells your Raspberry Pi, use the OV5647 driver and settings for the camera. And this is important because the newer automatic detection methods used by LibCamera might not recognize this older sensor, so you have to manually specify its driver. Throughout the boot config file, I didn't see either of these two entries, so at the bottom, under all, I went ahead and I put the DT overlay equals OV5647. And uh, since I don't see the camera auto detect equals zero anywhere, I may have to put that down here in the bottom as well. And this is important because it disables the automatic camera detection because by default the system will try to auto detect and configure the camera hardware. Now these older modules like the one I have here, they aren't always correctly detected by lib camera. So setting this to zero will make sure that your auto detection is turned off and that allows me to manually specify the DT overlay to take full control. Now since we made these changes in nano, and nano is the Linux command line text editor, we can save our changes by holding control and hitting the letter O. And now that we're done making changes to our file, we can exit the editor by pressing control X. Next, I'm going to reboot the Raspberry Pi with a sudo reboot. Next, we'll use the libcamera hello command to launch a preview of the camera feed just to make sure that we set it up correctly and that the camera is working. And by default, this command will run the video feed for 5 seconds and then shut off. You can also specify a duration that you want the video to play by using the dash dash timeout or for short dash dash t followed by the amount of time that you want the video feed to be open in milliseconds. But I'll go ahead and use dash dash timeout zero to run the video feed indefinitely and doing this I'll have to manually terminate it by using control c. And there's a look at the feed and this will run indefinitely like I said and I'll just have to use control c to terminate the video feed. There we go. Now before I end the video, I do want to show you how to record something now that you know that your camera is working. We'll start with the PWD command, which stands for Print Working Directory. It just displays the full path of the directory you're currently in. Now I'm going to use the command ls to list the files and directories that are in my current working directory. And I see videos. I want to record my video to that videos directory, so 
Now we're going to type into the terminal libcamera dash vid dash t 10,000 for 10,000 milliseconds or 10 second video dash o and that's a dash o is a flag to tell us the file path where we're going to save our video and for us it is forward slash home forward slash b monster forward slash videos with a capital v forward slash vid1 name of our file dot h264 and that extension is a pretty good indicator that it's raw video data and it's usually used for compression efficiency in this video you can tell it's a little bit fuzzy and, and out of focus so let's go ahead and focus it real quick all right, I'm going to go ahead and twist that uh, little ring a little bit more. You can see it's in pretty good focus. Uh, maybe it could be better. Um, I think it's pretty good, though, right there. Now I can turn it and really take it out of focus. And I don't. Maybe this is for things that are further away. I didn't really experiment with it, but uh, that's how you focus your camera if you have the one I have. And here's an up close focus view of uh, this Fortnite character here holding some LCD eyeballs. And you can see, even though this camera's a little older, it still has good images, so it's still a viable option. It's pretty cheap. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And check out that video if you enjoyed this one. And I'll see you again very soon with another video.